The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Does the Catholic Church contradict this in their teaching on the Immaculate Conception of Mary? Was Mary free from the stain of original sin from the moment of her conception like the Catholic Church teaches? As we discuss the Immaculate Conception, I want to look at the scriptures in the Roman Road. The Roman Road is the step that you would go through, the formula, if you were helping somebody accept faith in Jesus Christ or convert to Christianity. And, and I believe, I don't want to oversimplify this, but I believe most Christians accept this as the formula for conversion to Christianity. So the Roman road is uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's important for us to clarify that in the Immaculate Conception, Catholics are not saying that Mary did not need the, the sacrifice of, of Christ on the cross, that she didn't need a savior. Catholics do profess that Mary did need a Savior and that she was saved. The Immaculate Conception just, just explains that she was saved in a particular way. Now, what do, what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at some scriptures. If we go into the Old Testament, we're going to see some examples that the Roman road does not apply to. So, for example, Adam and Eve were not conceived nor born. They were created. They were created without sin. And when they did sin, they did not have the opportunity to go through this formula and, and uh, profess faith in Jesus Christ, not yet, and, and be saved. If we keep going down the list through the book of, um, through, the, through the Old Testament, we'll, we'll meet a character named Enoch and Elijah, who, according to the Roman road, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but they did not die. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, and we know that they did sin, but they never died. Scripture is very specific. They didn't die. And then every other character in the Old Testament was not able in any way, because obviously Jesus wasn't born and died and resurrected, yet they were not able to go through this formula of the Roman road during the time of, old, of the Old Testament. So what is, the, what is the point of saying all that? The point of saying that is in all of these way, in all of these people, there was a particular need for God to apply the grace of his salvation to these people in a unique manner, in something different than the formula that you or I might do in the grocery store parking lot they required a different method, a different formula. So does God use different formulas than the Roman road to save people? Well, yes, we have the good thief as, as, as an example. Now you might say, wait a minute, the good thief did go through the Roman road, but he didn't. This, um, this last scripture, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it's past tense. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the good thief did not profess or believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. He couldn't have known that when he was dying on the cross. So Jesus saved the good thief in a different method than the Roman road. And in the same way, he saved all of the people in the Old Testament in a different manner. Similar, but different. So that brings us to Mary, who uniquely lived in both times. She lived, obviously, before the birth of Christ in the age of the Old Testament, and then after the birth of Christ, she lived in the age of the New Testament. So she could have prayed the Roman road after the death and the resurrection of her son. She could have prayed this. But let's take this religion 
and let's scatter around the Middle East and around the Mediterranean just to see what happens with this religion that we've now put together. Because the first philosopher that we come to, and I understand that the Greeks had some crazy ideas about their gods. I'm, I'm not going there. I'm talking about what we believe, what we are professing, and what we're teaching with these scriptures. Okay, The first question that they're going to ask us is, if all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we need to be redeemed in order to be united to the glory of God, then how could a woman who has sinned carry the glory of God in her womb? If that's the case, then this whole thing is contradicted. We don't need to be redeemed. We can be united to the glory of God. Mary has demonstrated it by her pregnancy. First question, the religion is done. The incarnation does not hold water. So what Catholics are saying in the teaching of the Immaculate Conception is not that Mary didn't need a savior. What they're saying is that God saved her in a different way than he did to people alive today in the church parking lot who are going through the Roman road, becoming Christians for the first time. She received God's sanctifying grace in a unique way that was different and necessary from every other person from the Old Testament, from the New Testament. By the Immaculate Conception, she is able to be united in a unique way to the glory of God in, in, in such a way that none of us ever could. Because of the Immaculate Conception, the Incarnation can actually take place. And because the Incarnation can take place, we have a Savior. The Immaculate Conception is not in any way a threat to the Scriptures, particularly in the, in the letter to the Romans. The Immaculate Conception is a beautiful teaching that upholds the divinity of the Christ child that Mary gave birth to. So as Catholics, it's important for each of us to study our faith, especially apologetics, so because of that, we put together a list of the 10 essential apologetics books that we believe every Catholic should read. We invite you to head over to our website. The link is in the description, and you can get that list for free. Check out that list. Let us know what you think. Let, it, let, let us know if you think there, there are other books that should be on that list. And uh, we want to thank you for watching this video, and we will catch you in the next video.